It's hard to be a vintage or historic camper from the early 20th century and not want a Trapper Nelson packboard. And uh, I got one here on me right now. This is one that I made. I don't have an original. But, uh, you know, during my research and things, it seems like that after Trapper Nelson patented his, which was in 1922, that's when the official patent came out, but it took him a while for the business to take off. So really we're talking about mid-1920s and even into the 1930s before the Trapper Nelson pack really exploded in popularity in outdoor adventure culture, okay? And it seems like there's a lot of people who took the design of the Trapper Nelson and kind of made it their own. They put their own spin on it. And the beauty of it is, is that Trapper Nelson, he designed it based off of something that he experienced when he was in Alaska. He borrowed an Inuit's wooden pack frame and it was wrapped in seal skin. And uh, it must have been uncomfortable or maybe he really liked it, I don't know. But uh, based off of that experience, he was determined to come up with his own design. And it took a while for him to do it because his trip to Alaska was in 1920 and the patent wasn't until 1922. And then he tried to go around and try to sell it, right? Now, how does this fit in into you know, my persona and what I like to do? I'd like to do a lot of scouting stuff with my kids, right? But um, I'm all about affordable equipment and especially you know, trying to find affordable equipment for you guys that you could use historic gear that you can easily find, that you can easily purchase and how to adapt it. Now, this pack here, you notice is a Boy Scout pack. It's a Yucca 574. So it's the largest um, pack model of the 1930s that they had. This pack is great. There's a lot of them out there and you can buy them for around 20 bucks each and that's in good shape. So what that means for you is that if you're trying to get into either bushcraft, campcraft, historical camping, whatever, doesn't matter, that this is an affordable option for you. And you can fit everything you need for a weekend in this size pack. You don't need something larger. Now remember, we tend to get things that are large because we think we have all this stuff, but if you try to limit yourself to something that's moderate size like this, then you're not taking everything in the kitchen sink. Okay, so having a pack like this, the Yucca 574, which I did a video on, and I'm gonna do an updated video on it here soon, you know, this is a great option for you, but here's the catch. Here's the problem that we run into, especially if you're six foot one like me, and maybe you got a little weight on you, you're not gonna be able to fit one of these packs just over your shoulder. And talking to a lot of old scouters, honestly, they didn't care for using these packs as they were originally designed. So, hence the Trapper Nelson pack. Okay. So we're going to take a look at this pack and all the features and I'm going to show you the adaptability and the usefulness of this pack. I just want to say thank you to my patrons on Patreon because without them and their financial support, this channel would not be going where it's gone. So um, I really appreciate you if you're interested, if you like what I do on this channel and you want to contribute, check out my Patreon page. We sincerely appreciate because everything, no matter how small or how large, really helps push this channel forward. We really appreciate it. All right, so this pack, if we take this off, the way it's designed makes it really easy for an individual to take off and put on. That's the first thing I notice about this, even in comparison to like modern aluminum packs. The reason being is because how low the wood frame goes. Now, ideally, if you customize this versus just off the rack or buying an antique one, especially if you are a modern build, you may want to just make your own. You can find antiques, they're, they're out there. Uh, they're not exactly modest in price because a lot of people collect them, a lot of people use them for man cave furniture and stuff like that. Making one is really not that hard. Um, I got the inspiration to make mine several years ago. It's like three years ago, I was checking out Dave Canterbury's channel, which I suggest you do. He did a series, a very short series, on the Trapper Nelson pack, and he went through how to make 
a reproduction of it with his own spin on it. Uh, that's a problem that I ran into with making mine was the hardware aspect of it. Now, I, I went a little bit different than Dave's. I used um, some other uh, pack examples and inspiration to do for my own. But, you know, Dave Canterbury for real quick, real efficient, he did a great job on his video. So I'll put a link of his video in my description below. That way, you know, you can find it easily. But these frames, this wood part here, what's nice about it is it gives you some place to grab to kind of hold to get your arm in through the shoulder straps. That's the first thing. Secondly, these metal caps, they're not there for looks. You know, this is a, a walnut frame. Now, historically, they're made of maple or oak or some other hard wood. I had a bunch of black walnut, Ohio black walnut, and I love the color of it. And I was thinking about weight, weight and strength. Black walnut is lighter weight and density than oak. And if you're carrying a pack, you know, I was thinking about that, you know, trying to eliminate the weight on my pack. That way I could possibly carry a little bit more weight and gear or equipment or just not carry it at all. And, you know, I'm not out of anything. But the metal caps protects the wood from being put on the ground. Same thing with the top ones up here. You know, they can get thrown in a cart, a wagon, or a car, or whatever, and it's not gonna damage the frame. So that's the beauty of this. But if I were to put this on, I grab the strap, and I can sling it over. Now notice I can grab this where it is. It's right there where my arm can easily hold on to it. And I can push up on it. Now push in up on it, freeze the space for me to grab the strap back here so then I can easily get my arm in like so. Now if you like rucksacks or uh, traditional soft packs, that's not something that you do. Oftentimes, especially if it is weighed down or if it's a little bit of a larger size, you know, that can be kind of tough getting it on your shoulders. So that's another reason why I really, really like this. Now the original Trapper Nelson packs did not have leather straps. I took this uh, motivation from a Duluth pack. Now I have several Duluth packs. I'm gonna be doing some videos on them. I love Duluth equipment. The beauty of it is, is it's a hundred and some years old and it's still serviceable. Now that doesn't tell you something, but I don't know what will. Hey, Duluth, if you're watching this, I'd love to collaborate with you. So drop me a line. All right. so. You got your leather straps here. I like leather because it's traditional. It's not going to wear and tear as well as long as you keep them oiled and maintained. And um, I, I just like how it feels. I think it looks good and I love how it feels, you know? So if to take it off again, you can grab the bottom, you push up, that frees your arm out and you can get your arm free. Now, this pack does have some clips. So if you need to quick release it, you can do it that way as well. Now, Dave Canterbury's, his solution was using the, the rope loops over the wooden ends, which I think is really good. But um, again, I went with more of a traditional historic pack idea. So I can lift up here and I can find my clip. Pull down my D-ring. And since I have a swivel, it moves just a little bit. It's not pinching my side. I pinch on that clip right there and I got my quick release very much like the um, the boy traditional Boy Scout packs but even during the American Civil War their knapsacks they had one side that had a clip that way you could quick release it and if you want to get back on all you do is lift up and you clip it back now I put it on both sides but honestly you don't really need it because push up get your arm out I suppose if after a long day, or maybe you're wearing a thicker coat or something, you can have a friend, if nothing else, help you and unclip it, and it comes off a lot easier. All right. The next thing you're gonna notice about this style of pack is the opening. Now, oftentimes the opening did not have a leather lining. Now, maybe in a little bit of experience with leather and the looks, and I wanted something that was gonna last me a long time. You know, I figure you put in the work once, 
you don't have to put it in again as long as you treat it well and you maintain it. So I went ahead and put that lining in so these straps wear and tear and everything won't eat away at this canvas. Now this canvas is used for a couple reasons. The primary reason is for comfort because this is going to um, allow your shoulders and other areas to kind of conform but still be still support the pack. The second reason is for ventilation. If you ever hiked out in the summer and you got just a heavy loaded backpack on, you know, there's not that air that's going between your back and the pack. So it's going to get really hot. You take off your pack. The next thing you know, you got like this big wet spot on the back from your, your sweat. So this was actually a pretty ingenious and advanced idea. Um, metal frame backpacks of the later 20th century did the same thing. They used various types of webbing or various types of straps or whatever uh, to keep it off of your back so you have that ventilation. Now, if you're not sweating, if you're more comfortable, you're gonna be able to go a little bit further. So that's a brilliant idea as well. All right. So how did I connect this to a Yucca 574? If you've liked this video, if you found it useful or interesting, will you please do me a favor and click like? That way, you're helping other people out find this video because that's how YouTube works. If people like it, then it gets out to others. And if you wanna help out the next person, and go ahead and click like. We really appreciate it. As you can see, you have the D-rings that's over these eye bolts. And you also have this brass hook. Now the original hook was made out of metal. At my big box store, I couldn't find the metal wire, so I grabbed some brass. So if you leave in the, the salty areas, either on the Pacific coast or the Atlantic coast, or down in Florida or something, where you have salt air and you're doing a lot of hiking, maybe brass is where you want to go anyways. You know, it doesn't rust and it's, uh, it's just as serviceable. So you take out this wire here and that's gonna free these D-rings. So now you can remove the pack and you can attach other things to this. So maybe you wanna get some firewood. You can do that this way. Again, this isn't a video on the Yucca pack, but as you can see, I have this pack, I have these straps here. So if I really wanted to or needed to, I could still use this separate from the pack board and use them both individually in some other way. So that's pretty handy. We're gonna take the pack off. So now you can see the options and how it's laid out. Now these eye bolts are just cut through slits here, like the traditional. And these are grommets, not eyelets. If you decide to make your own, make sure that they're grommets, not eyelets, because grommets are able to withstand more tension than the eyelets. Eyelets will pull out. Uh, trust me, because originally I got eyelets and I made the mistake and I had to redo it. So what this does is you can take this fabric off and you can clean it, you can maintain it or something, uh, use it for something else. But what I love, love, love about this setup is now I can put something on here. Maybe it's a tent, maybe it's even a sleeping bag, right? So this, this is good. I could comfortably hike in this in miles. And a lot of that has to do with this design of the Trapper Nelson pack, okay? Because it's beautiful. I have my shoulder blades, are padded because the wood is not where my shoulder blades is and instead it's that cloth where it is. It also is resting right above my hip. So there's a, a piece of wood right here. This is the cross piece. It's right above my hips. So that's nice where it, uh, it kind of leans back. Uh, the pack itself isn't gonna cut into me. And the third piece is right here. It's right below my shoulder blades. So I have one right above my shoulder blades, I have one right below my shoulder blades, and then I have one above my hip. And that makes this pack work wonderfully. And of course, I have the wide straps. Now these wide straps distributes the weight versus having something narrow. Now, if you really wanted to, you could fancy these straps up. You could put some wool on there on the backside so it gives it a little more padding if you need to. You could even put some batting or something else and put another piece of leather over top of it or even cloth you, know, you, you do you you can even do a chest strap if you really wanted to if you want to get really really fancy nice thing about these d-rings on here you could actually create a hip belt to again another way of trying to distribute the weight i love it i love all that you can do with the trapper nelson pack and i can't wait to experiment 
more with it and I'll keep you updated with uh, all the different ways I figure out how to use this thing. I'm gonna be doing a future video on how to make my style of pack. Again, this was influenced by Dave Canterbury's video and I wanna give a shout out to him because if it wasn't for his video, then I probably wouldn't have been inspired to do it. I would have thought that it was too complicated to do it myself, but he gave me the confidence to go ahead and try it. And I really appreciate the effort that he put into it. If you're interested in more of the history, the specific detailed history about the Trapper Nelson pack, my buddy, Sarge Vining, he did a video on that. His link in the video will be in the description as well. I strongly urge that you check that one out as well. So let me know what you guys think about the bag. You know, how would you pack it? Do you have any experience with the Trapper Nelson pack? If you do, do you like it? Do you not like it? If you don't like it, tell me what you don't like about it because I'd love to, to hear about it and learn from it. And if you've got experiences that would help others with their Trapper Nelson pack, then please share it below because this community is awesome. I love how this channel interacts with each other and I appreciate all of you guys, your feedback, your support, and everything else like that. Now, if you liked it, make sure to click like. You want to make sure to subscribe because we got more videos coming out all about awesome historical campcraft stuff. And there's a lot of big things coming out this year, and you don't want to miss it. So hit that notification button. If you want to learn more about the Scout Packs, then you want to check out this playlist over here because I've done several videos of different types of scout packs that I think you would really enjoy and get some use out of it and maybe even some inspiration. Now, if you haven't noticed, I got a store, so I'm trying to come up with some designs and stuff. You know, of course, any purchase that you do, uh, it goes to help this channel. We really appreciate it. And there's some camping items on there. So check it out, like the cups and, and water bottles and stuff like that. You know, I, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss out to your loved ones and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.